the Dryden Flight Research Center, and Edwards Air Force Base took part in a training exercise simulating the rescue of a space shuttle crew after a landing mishap. Fire and rescue crews and medical personnel used these drills to familiarize themselves with procedures to safely remove crew from the shuttle, determine the severity of their injuries, and transport the injured to medical facilities. These rescue drills are held periodically at Dryden and the Kennedy Space Center. Dryden is the primary alternate landing site for the space shuttle. A fire and smoke page featuring the latest images of forest fires and smoke plumes is now available on NASA.gov. The images are captured by NASA's suite of cutting-edge Earth-observing satellites and airborne observatories, including the unmanned Icona aircraft used recently to pinpoint wildfire hotspots across California. The pictures help scientists understand the impact of fires and smoke on Earth's climate and ecosystems and support ongoing efforts to fight wildfires nationwide. The Fire and Smoke webpage also features the latest research articles and multimedia resources from across the agency. Check it out at www.nasa.gov slash fires. Select public schools and nonprofit organizations will soon get a funding boost from NASA's Office of Education. As many as eight K-12 competitive grants will be awarded this year to improve science, technology, engineering, and math learning and instruction. Each funded proposal is expected to enhance students' academic experiences and improve educators' abilities to motivate students. This year's K-12 competitive grants total up to one and a half million dollars. The biggest annual air show in the U.S. helped commemorate NASA's 50th anniversary with special exhibits and a visit from the agency's top official. This year's Air Venture Show, held annually in Oshkosh, Wisconsin by the Experimental Aircraft Association, included an address by NASA Administrator Michael Griffin. The EAA Air Venture Museum displayed unique artifacts depicting the history of NASA and U.S. spaceflight. Museum visitors also saw models of the Ares rockets and Orion capsule in development to return humans to the moon. Also on display was an exhibit about NASA wind tunnels and wind tunnel research. Hey! More than 200 headquarters baseball fans, their families and friends spent a recent evening at Washington, D.C.'s new Nationals Park NASA Night at the Nats. <laughs> NASA Night at the Nats has been an annual headquarters event since the team's relocation from Montreal in 2005. The game between Washington and Philadelphia went to the visitors 2-1. to one. Ten years ago this week, on August 6, 1998, the Pathfinder Plus aircraft set a new altitude record for propeller-driven aircraft. The solar-powered Superlight aircraft with a 44-foot-long center section and 121-foot wingspan soared to a height of 80,201 feet. The benefits of Pathfinder and vehicles like it are in helping uh, do remote sensing, uh, both from the standpoint of uh, agriculture. It could also be used during nat natural disasters as a communications relay uh, when the infrastructure on the ground uh, was down and it could also be a great benefit during disasters in terms of just supporting aerial uh, monitoring. Pathfinder Plus is now enshrined in the permanent collection of the National Air and Space Museum's Stephen F. Udvar Hazy Center in Virginia. Pathfinder Plus's record was shattered in 2001 near the Hawaiian island of Kauai by Helios, establishing the current world record for propeller-driven aircraft at 96,863 feet. And that's This Week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, log on to www.nasa.gov.